Hello and welcome to another alias surfacing video. This is going to focus on modeling this spatula and I'm using alias auto studio 2019. Um, this could also be made with alias surfacing, but I don't think this will be able to you, you will be able to use the same workflow with alias design because it's a bit limited. Um, I also want to take this time before the video starts that um, that this file is actually for sale on my website and it's going to be an iGest file. Uh, I also make it a step file so that so that other NURBS and solid modeling softwares can read it and it's also going to include this hard edge model so that you can you can maybe use it as a study guide or maybe you could try to um, get the same results I did um, just a quick reminder um, you know it's uh, don't get too frustrated if it's a uh, if it's very hard for you, this this model in general was uh, was actually a bit more difficult than I than I would have imagined. Um, so so don't um don't think that this is an, an easy. Even though it's a nice simple shape, this wasn't even easy for me, and I have eight years experience. So, um, anyways, uh, I'll get the video started. I hope you guys like it. It's going to be a long one, so you know, get some popcorn and some soda, and um and yeah, you know, leave a comment. Tell me what you think about it. Um, unless it's a hater ass comment, I don't want to hear that shit. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, anyways, I uh, uh, hope you guys enjoy it. Bye. Hello, and welcome to another video on alias modeling. This is going to be on making this spatula. And it's going to be a more advanced video because um, I'm going to focus on making these smooth transitions. And how I did that it was with a bunch of CV manipulation. So um, uh, this, this uh, video is going to have a lot. It's going to talk a lot about that on how I get curvature with different surfaces doing that, how I control the the alignment so you know it has a smoother transition and um, and things of that nature um, so when the videos get to that point I'll slow them down but while I just model it I'll, I'll, I'll have it sped up about three times and um, and basically the whole thought process behind this spatula you know is a one day project is uh, I basically have this volume on the outside and then um, once it goes to the end it becomes a bezel and then as it sort of travels around it, it fades back into like the handle you know that's kind of like the idea I had in my head and um, and I'll show you guys how I did these little quick separations we're also going to show I'm also going to show you guys how I do these uh, tricky ball corners because these are very like those angles are very exaggerated so you really have to do a lot of custom CV manipulation to get that going but see even this tip I mean if it wasn't the tip of a spatula I mean I could see this structure being used for like a plane you know so um, I'll make sure to slow down in, in those sections. And even these small little fillets, actually, um, they gave me some problems that I wasn't expecting. But, um, but I solved them and I recorded how I solved them. And, and I'll, I'll slow down in those cases too. So this is definitely going to be a much like um, higher level uh, video. Uh, it's going to be a little bit casual because I don't have time you know, to do it too detailed. But, um, uh, but I'm definitely going to try to focus on what I feel are the important lessons. So I do hope you guys enjoy this. And, um, and uh, yeah, I, um, I would play some music if I were you. Okay, so basically there's this um, Instagram uh, that's uh, Render Weekly. And every Monday they put up a different challenge. And a lot of product design uh, people, you know, they'll do the quick little projects. So this is what this is. It's a very quick... Um, I did this on Monday. They said um, they they wanted a spatula, and I was like, "Well, let's see, let's see if I can model a spatula," you know. And you know, you guys already saw my my model. I already had that in my head. Like that's kind of like um, what popped up in my head. And then from there, I'm just trying to sort of like place it in space. So um, the first two lines I did, those are just 300 millimeter lines. So that kind of gave me like the overall size. Um, so it's about like a foot. And um, and yeah, so right now all, all I'm doing is just a simple curve network like I did with my other ones. Um, in, in, in this uh, video, remember that a big part of this is also making sure that I keep it under one day. You know, like I, I, you don't want to be too serious with these things, you know. Um, but anyways, I'm just such an automotive modeler. Honestly, it's like anything I model kind of comes out like a car. <laughs> but um. But yeah, so so this is basically the and and I'm not even gonna you know cut out the scenes where I sort of just like pause and think because if if you see how like the the mouse is moving everywhere and then all of a sudden it just stops, it's really just me thinking you know and I I could kind of go through the whole file and see and show you you know and um, sort of delete everything, but um, 
but I feel like it's almost it's a it, it almost helps I mean so you guys can see that you know this takes me a long time to you know figure out uh, and of course like like with all my other videos uh, this is my particular way of style of modeling you know um, there's def there's definitely other ways that are more centered around curve networks and stuff like that but me I just I just model like this um, and uh, yeah right now is the first time I save it and it always really like um uh, remember to save often actually this is the second time I filmed it I was actually doing uh, another spatula that kind of had a similar design and then it froze at 20 minutes without any anything saved so I was really mad um, so right now all I did is I skinned I skinned those two outer curves and then I added more degrees and now I'm, uh, I copied I pasted it to make the other side and um, and then I moved it up before I thought I was gonna be asymmetrical but, um, but then later I just delete the, the underside. And then I move out those CVs to the to the side because I didn't want it to be that pointy. I wanted to have a little more width to the side. So that, that's how I, I sort of accomplished that. Okay, so I wanted to slow it down for this tricky section. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna project those two inside curves onto that surface that I just did, right? Then I'm gonna isolate it and I'm gonna use my trim convert to make that bottom left surface into its own surface. So here I do the trim convert and then I trim out the top surface. And now I have this like basically little section, right? Now I want to move it down. So I grab the, the two hole, the top holes and then I push all those CVs down just a notch because I know that that will give me my, the nice little like leverage that I want. There's also another reason that I don't touch that last hole, like that's closest to the edge, because I want the tangency of both of those surfaces to remain similar. And that helps me way down the line when I add a fillet down that edge, you know? Um, so it's, it's always important to sort of, well, in my head, I always try to keep everything, the whole project in, um, in, in my head before I start it, you know? And, and now I'm just extending these back so that so that I can add a transitional surface that that will give me that like look that I want, and I'm just kind of seeing the how much how much of a lip I want and and how big or smooth of a transition I want, you know, because the more distance you give them, the you know the the smoother they'll be. Um, and now I'm gonna use my freeform, uh, my freeform blend tool, and then for the corners I'm gonna go connect ends, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna um, make sure that that when I query edit. I only want one side to be curvature, the, cur the, the side on the bottom. So um, um, on my side two, I change it from curvature to positional. And so now I have this nice little like like um, highlight that, that goes through it. And then it's gonna bend around and and um, and go to the edge. And the same thing, I uh, you know connect ends and um, I make sure that side two is positional. And, um, and then this gives me the surface treatment for that corner that I wanted. And if you noticed, I added a little fail there, and that is your guide to fast forward until you don't see that, because um, basically these next couple steps are kind of um, I'm just trying to find the shape in space, and so I try a lot, a lot of different things that um, end up not being correct. And I was actually thinking of like maybe just cutting that out and just showing you guys, oh, this is how I developed the really good um, you know surface I did. But I felt like it's um, even though it might be annoying to sort of sort of go through a um, something that fails, you know, especially for me when I see it, I'm like, uh, I, why did I do that, you know? But I actually do think it sort of showcases how I came up with the final solution, you know. I feel like that's missing a lot in in these tutorials, you know. People just show you a nice like perfect path. And I, I kind of want to show you guys, you know, that it's, it's, it kind of takes some time and it fails, you know. And right now I'm extending the surfaces and railing some of those edges. And I'm just sort of in my head, right, um, I'm sort of getting all those volumes in my head and seeing how they react to each other or, or how they relate to each other, you know, because um, because it's still not completely in my head, like the structure and um, a lot of things times you'll have something in your head that you're like oh yeah I'm gonna do this and do that and once you once you actually attempt it you you find different realities with the geometry so you have to sort of be like okay well that didn't work and then you 
and then you try something else, you know? So, so right now, all I know is that I wanna take that outside, that, you know, those the, the outside bigger surface from the top and run it around and, it, and then have it relay back down to the bottom, you know? And I also want the bottom to have a sort of a, of a fade, you know? So, um, uh, I'm just trying to figure out how to build these surfaces and what would be the cleanest ways. Like right now, I'm adding this like basically plane, and um, and honestly, when I look back at that, maybe I should have added those like planes as um as maybe um a a construct, you know, and then build the model off of it. But since I'm just kind of like flying by the the you know the seat of my pants or whatever the expression is, I um. I kind of just you know I'm sort I'm sort of winging it you know um a lot of times when I model I don't really look at the model that I mean I'm sort of just like I'm not really thinking is this the best step forward I'm just kind of like being okay I know I need a surface there and I kind of know that this surface is gonna go that way and then as I keep developing it and and I keep sort of like failing at different solutions I get a better idea of what is necessary for that design solution and. Um, and so I always know that even if I'm going down the wrong path, it at least um, it helps me understand what 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 would the right path be, you know. So um, uh, and and this is all you're really seeing, um, you know. I'll, I think I'll just let you guys sort of see me work without talking much, and um, and sort of see me try to solve this problem, you know. I know what you're thinking right now. It's um, you're thinking, what the hell is he doing? And I'm actually thinking the same shit because I'm like, what was I thinking? Like, I have no idea where I'm going with this. <laughs> but honestly, like, it's like how I said before. It's I'm just I'm just trying. I'm just exploring. You know, I don't I don't uh, at this point. I try to keep it very like um fluid. You know, like I know that if I stretch something now or align something, I know that there's going to be some like weird things happening, but I'm just kind of like going down the list of different solutions in my head and I'm just kind of seeing, okay, can I do this? How does it relate to that? How, you know, um, and I think that's also part of the process of modeling, you know, um, uh, after, after spending some time with the model, the whole model becomes, starts like sort of developing in your head. And especially once you start working it, like you know, all the relationships between the surfaces and um, and the different geometries, they're all like living in your head, you know, um, uh, for as long as you're doing that project. And um, and I think it's one of the, the the prettier aspects of my career, you know. I kind of enjoy um, this part of it, this like problem solving part of it, you know. And um, and as you can see here, like you know, when you see the mouse stopping, is I'm also very confused, and I'm just like, how? Like I know that this it needs to go down, um, but my plane is kind of in the wrong area, and also I know that I made it too sharp. You know, like if those that edge, you know, it's basically a giant like triangle, like a very sharp triangle, and I know that I'm like, okay, this has to, this is gonna be wrong. I wanted a bezel, you know, and. Um, and so when you see me just kind of move around like that, it's just it's just me thinking. And then a lot of the moves you do you see here is um it's just me little little like mini trial and error. But once I, I get close, I'll 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 stop the I mean I'll I'll take out the fail and I'll show you like oh like the eureka moments as um I guess you could call them.
So if you see here, it kind of looks like I'm, I'm on, my, on the right track, except that it's too thin. And, and what I'm noticing right now is that where that top uh, little lip surface goes meets the other one, it isn't. It has no relationship with it. So I'm uh, I'm gonna cut up the spatula surface, and um, and and add a square to it so I could bend it up, which actually ends up being the wrong thing to do. But I'm sort of like explaining, you know, my thought process behind what I'm, why I'm doing this, you know. And here you'll see that I'll grab that corner and lift it up. And then I'm going to grab that surface I was talking about and realign it. But the result actually comes out quite different to what I had in my head. And, um, and, and but it's still a part of the process that I sort of, I thought I had to go through or had to show you guys so that you guys can see that, that I'm, uh, you know, that sometimes you come up with things that you're like, all right, yeah, this is probably what's, what needs to happen. And then once you actually try it out, it does, it doesn't work. Here, when I started aligning this surface to that new twisted or elevated surface, I was actually quite surprised at the result. You know, um, uh, in my head, everything was coming out a lot smoother, and you know, the twist was going to be a lot more gradual. But now it has like it sort of happens towards the end, and it doesn't really have a relationship with anything else. So it's a. Uh, I, I, this is where I'm like, okay, this is a complete fail, and um, and I sort of have to. Uh, think about how, how I can approach this in a different manner. So as you can see here, I'm not doing too well. Um, I'm just, I can't really figure it out right now. And so I decided to quit modeling in general and pursue, you know, maybe like a baking career. And then I walked Abby and felt a lot better so I, I wanted to remind you guys that um i take breaks all the time when i'm modeling designing anything like you know uh we just watched i think like about about almost an hour of work sped up and so i really i felt like if i just stepped away and just sort of cleared my mind and just and just kind of like focus on something else i can come back to it and be a lot more refreshed and that's exactly what i did so after I had that walk, I kind of had a couple of things in my head that um, that sort of like stuck out, right? One is that in the edge, it's flat, like as in I, I reached zero, which would be like impossible to produce, you know? So I remember thinking, okay, I know I have a couple um, constrictions, you know, and one of them was going to be a, a thick bezel. So this is what I'm doing now. I'm, I'm getting... I'm railing that um that bezel all the way around and this is like a, my new like um rule of this project you know because at, uh when I was building all of this it's sort of like uh it's sort of like you don't know what what the restrictions are in the in the structure um or where you could kind of like you know use one thing for the other until you start building it and then once that happens everything sort of starts clicking in place so Right now, I'm just doing the railings to make my my um, my bezel nice and and consistent. So once I put this bezel, I knew that the plane, my original plane, was gonna be too low. You know, so like once I checked it, I'm like, okay, yeah, definitely that was wrong. So I delete my old plane, and then I use that bezel as a as a rail to start this new plane and. Um, 
and I kind of have the idea that that it's gonna have to get thicker towards the the top, you know. So um, so once I extend it, I can kind of see how that angle towards the top has to go a little bit thicker. I'm also gonna extend it back to square it up more because you know that angle is a little bit extreme. So I get it a little more 90 degrees, and then I extend it out again. And once I see how it intersects, I definitely know that the top right CV, I'm going to have to um, lift it up so that it's thicker. It's thickest right there at the very like beginning of the handle. And I use the CV control tool to move it up on, um, on the normals. And I actually, you know what, I'm going to pause it here and I'm going to just talk about just the CV control tool because it's something that's going to, we're going to be using a lot. So I'm going to do a very quick um, dive into it. Okay, so what is CV massaging? What's the transform CV tool? Where is it? Um, it's one of the most important tools uh, that you have as a as a, a to me as a design modeler. Um, there's a, there's some people that never use it, um, but I use it every day, um, especially when you're doing class A stuff. When you're doing hyper, um, you know, um, surfacing for transitions and curvature, doing your own custom curvature. I'm gonna use this a lot in this in the video. Um, but I want to show you guys just a quick, uh, you know, demo of, of what, what, it, what it is. So it's over here. And, um, and when you press spacebar, you get all of these options, you know. And I know it could be, seem a bit daunting, but I'm just going to go through the ones I use the most. And, um, and, and, and some that I don't use, but are, 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 quite, are quite powerful. So um, uh, basically right now I'm going to focus just on the tool and, and what it does, you know, not, not so much how it relates to alignment that that I'll, um, I'll talk about later in the video. But let's say I have this surface, right? And I myself, if you see here, I have the transform CV tool in different in different um, settings, you know, this is at 10 for the mouse sensitivity. This is at 50. And this is even at 1000. So um, if I select and I have those hotkeyed up to my C, and then shift C, and I think, uh, uh, control shift C. So, <clears throat> so if I uh, and if you notice when I when I click on it, different sort of um, uh, settings pop up, right? Let's just let's just go really slowly here. I'm gonna select this CV, and I'm gonna activate my tool, right? Uh, if I press spacebar, the ones I use the most are always the ones that are in relationship with the geometry, as in um, as in this one, which is based off the normal. And um, and when I click on it, and I go up and down. You see, it, it moves the CV based off its normal. You know, um, it's always th that this is one of the most common ones I use to find for alignment and um, and uh, you know change the elevation of CVs. Um, I n almost never use this one, which is basically based off the X Y Z because that's um that's just basically out in space with no relationship. If I want to move something to the side, I use this one, which is uh which these arrows come out, and then you could go from here to here you know um another another thing too is like if you have let's say this one and this one if i un if i untrim it and i show the 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 wireframe you know uh like for example let's say i was looking for tangency or like a collinear tangency if i press z uh, i mean if i turn on my transform cv there's this i think it's uh this one and if i click on this one and i click here See, oh, hold on, I got a call. Give me one second. So if I use, uh, if I if I pick that CV again, and I use, and I use, um, and I use this one again. I'm sorry. No, this one, the CV, and I and I use that. See, I could align it to that, and it works on any any basically CV hole you see. So if I even I can even align it to this one if I wanted to, um, but obviously that doesn't really make a lot of sense. And uh, so, so this is a very powerful tool. Like for example, here I can move it to the side, you know, to clean it up. <clears throat> and, and like right now, I'm stressed since I moved it so much. There's not even like position or anything like that. So if I if I align it right, and then let me let me check my um, tangency, right? I could grab this one because I know it's tangent, so I know it's gonna be the first one that has an error. And then I go through my normal. Okay, and then now I know that that part is fixed. You go here, that part is fixed. And you see how I can't really see what's going on. I have no 
no, um, uh, I need more details. What I what you have to do is make sure that that when you do your your tangency check or your curvature check, you uh you press your left mouse button and then you move it up. See, so you so you can see what's going on, right? <clears throat> and here I can see a little more clear what's going on. And if I use my this one, I can slowly I can slowly. make it happen see now I, I reached I reached um, I reached tangency you see how it turned into into a C and now I know that there's this is all I'm really doing right now is like basically custom custom uh, uh, CV manipulation to to find alignment and I'm not I'm not really I'm this is more of a technical exercise you know I'm just showing you guys how I use that tool but um but that that's basically how how it how you can sort of custom custom make your your uh, your uh, or find your own alignment you know this one's getting really hard so see I, I I can't find the the I think if I move it to the side there you go I think I saw it there no okay then I'm gonna go here and I might even go higher sensitivity so uh, mouse sensitivity 10,000 right Mouse sensitivity ten thousand, and here, and here. Oh, there. <laughs> See, and uh, I, I kind, I kind of want to take this moment too to um, uh, make you guys sort of see that um. If you notice there, I was what I was moving it. I was moving it ten thousand times. Like, let me see how like wh how much was that? You know, like it was probably uh, one thousandth of a millimeter. And if I showed you guys like you know th how the curvature looked versus you know mathematical curvature versus you know um like you know with all the checks versus just having a bit of a of a curvature break here. Honestly, you would never you would never notice that and that's something I, I kind of try to emphasize a lot with people who are just beginning to understand this because you got to look at a project as the bigger scope of things, you know, um, a lot of times, especially rookies, I see well, not rookies, but you know, people who are just starting the career. Um, they'll they'll kind of go crazy looking for curvature everywhere. And it's like, it's like, let's think about scale here, you know, like, how much are you mo really moving that CV and how much would that affect the actual outcome of it? You know, um, that, that, that is a, more, a conversation you, you, like, you know, that's a bigger conversation more with your, like with the studio you're in and, and stuff like that. But personally, when I'm managing projects, I always tell kids like, yeah, aim for curvature, but don't be spending, uh, you know, half a day trying like how I did right now to, to get that curvature, just to sort of like impress yourself look at it from a bigger from a higher um you know uh, perspective obviously i've already moved this around a lot um but uh let me let me reopen it <clears throat> you know uh, uh look at it from a from a, a farther perspective you know see see how how the, that alignment is going don't spend too much time uh focusing on if it's mathematical curvature you know uh when when I was actually surprised that even so stuff that are positional where I kind of like made it so that it'll have a hard break. Once you actually see it in person and where I'm talking about huge even body size, it's really hard to tell where what something if it's not if it's not um, a very hard break with like a bigger like bigger than like three degree angle. Um, it's hard to tell when the difference between a curve like, you know, a very good curve like mathematical curvature versus like like, you know, this it's really it's really not it's I, I don't think it's within the tolerances of the manufacturing capabilities so remember this is you, you have to really I'm trying to emphasize a lot that that focus on the bigger picture and don't get stuck you know spending five hours trying to find curvature here and here because even in my model I don't even think I, I, I found cur like like you know like the curvature there is not and I can definitely go through this and basically do what I just did again, you know, like moving, moving everything. See, but it's like, it's like what, like, it doesn't really, 
is there really that big of a difference you know how like how would you even notice that difference you know especially when we're talking about a spatula like this you know um but anyways that's kind of a breakdown of the cv the cv the transform cv tool it's extremely important um it's really I remember when we press space bar this radial menu comes out uh, uh go through it go through the documentation it's something that if you really want to do these sort of high end um you know transitions like this you have to i in my head you have to i know there's there might be some other ways you do it with curve networks but how i how i've always done it especially as a class a modeler where you don't sometimes you just need to fix a transition you don't have any history or any curves that started with you just get a model you need to know how to control every single cv which is also the other reason why it's important to keep all of your degrees and everything um, as as clean as possible, you know, but um, but yeah. So so let's get back to how I um how I started doing all these transitions and um and yeah, just keep uh keep going with the modeling. Okay, and now we're back to the regular model, and so far all we've done is we sort of established the profile of the model, and also we established that it's going to be a bezel with a certain amount of thickness and um. And I also lifted up that corner, right, to make it to make it um, thicker towards the towards the top. And um, and actually, and if you think about what I was doing before about that twisting, what I really did is I made that twist go or that change of angle go from the very front of the the design to the back using this simple square as opposed to that weird shit what I was doing where I was cutting it up, you know. And uh, I kind of wanted to leave it here because like right now what's going on in my head is the, the my, my computer didn't freeze. I'm just like trying to think like, OK, what is the next step? You know, I am I'm, I'm kind of like looking at my new um, constrictions and being like, OK, now what do I have to do? I have to send this this uh, upper round surface around to the other side, you know, and I'm sort of like like trying to think of the steps in my head. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, reproject those edges onto this this um, this surface so that I can I can sort of cut it and ha get a, a clearer picture of what's going on. You know, a lot of times I do a lot of this like trimming stuff um, just to kind of help me figure shit out, you know, like even if it's not the right like, you know, they're not aligned or anything like that, like that. It helps me like kind of like I know that's going to be cut right there. So I'm like, OK, so I know that I need to fix this top surface. It's not like working because this one was made to flatten out towards the end. So I duplicate that edge and then I rail it to see what sort of result I get. And I'm like, OK, well, now we're, we're getting somewhere, but it's too thick. And 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 so in my head, I thought if I extended that surface back, it would be nice and, and straight and look good. And so that's exactly what I did. I remember when I was um, surfacing this that I was like, ah, oh, finally, Ray, we figured it out. You're the best modeler ever. All I have to do is extend this corner back and have it reach that edge and everything can be perfect, you know, um, but that's not how life turned out. Um, once I extended it back, I looked at it from the side. And as you see here, it has this really weird like twist that I didn't want at all. You know, I mean, it's not a weird twist. That's basically what the math does. So I was like, well, OK, that's not how I wanted to look. So I decided to take another approach. So I was like, OK, instead of instead of doing a rail like that, I'm going to basically make a square. So um, and this is what it would, um, what was sort of like going on in my head right now. I'm trying to figure out how can I change that angle, but also change that elevation, you know, and obviously, obviously um, that this sort of approach isn't the right approach so if right now my head is just like sort of thinking okay what do I do what do I do what do I do many times when um, uh, I can't figure out a certain corner I'll start focusing on another little problem and just solve that it's like another way for me to sort of like uh, do a little walk kind of you know um, so like right here I see that there's the the, the difference in, in elevation right there and I moved it up a little too much so I'm going to get that CV again and I'm going to use my control CV or transform CV tool and then I push it down so that now that edge is nice and and closed up. Um, you know, I don't even think I checked for alignment there, but the, uh, mostly because I knew there was going to be a big transitional surface there. 
Um, uh, but honestly, it's, it's also because in the back of my head, I'm still trying to figure out the main, the main problem. You know, I'm like, you know, sometimes I'll fix little alignment issues when my when I'm trying to figure out how to do more complex surfacing problems. And if you see from this angle, you could definitely see what I don't like about it. You know, like, um, uh, and it's it's always you know to me this is always part of it. So what I decided to do is I want that straight, right? So I add a curve from one edge from one edge to the other, and then I also duplicate that that edge, and now I delete that surface. And this uh, and duplicate that one edge again. And now I have deleted that surface, and I'm going to square up another uh, surface there, but now that edge is going to be controlled by that line. So now I have a much cleaner a much cleaner solution. And I have a curve network that I can that I can manipulate to make it work to my advantage. Now here I want you guys to pay really close attention because I'm moving the CVs down and connected with each other so that so that my whole square goes down to make it find that corner. And then I, I simplified it so that it's only one degree. And then I'm gonna move that C V down and and um and I'm also from the top view, I'm checking that they have similar thicknesses. And then now I'm moving this CV down and I'm looking at the intersection and I'm making sure that the intersection is relatively going down the middle. You know, this this makes this um, gives me a, a, a good faith that that these are kind of relating with themselves. You know, if two surfaces are intersecting and that intersection is going through the middle, it means that they're fairly balanced, you know. And now after that, I just do what I've been doing on the on the last couple of times. It's just a freeform blend. I make sure that the edges are connect ends, and um, and I think actually even default on that corner, yeah. And um, and then one side is going to be positional, and the other side is going to be curvature, you know, because that's kind of like the the surface treatment I want. And um, and there's so so to see if you guys can see here, I slowly slowly figured this out like now we're getting real close to the actual final um geometry of, of this of, of my form before i add all of the the surface transitions and now i just have to delete this surface and then add another freeform blend and um and even though you'll see right now that that freeform blend doesn't relate much to to the the surface in that corner um I still, I still, I leave it like that for right now because I figured that that um, even though they don't like you know they don't have a perfect relationship with themselves, um, I figured that that um, once I add the transitional surfaces, I can sort of I can figure it out, you know. So um, uh, you know sometimes sometimes you just have to kind of be like okay, I, you know maybe that relationship isn't perfect, but. Um, there's gonna be a big transition there, so once I get there, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll focus on this problem again, you know, and that's kind of what, what, what happens after this. All right, so now we're going back to turbo speed because the next couple um, moves are really easy moves. Um, right now, all I'm thinking is if I should project, trim, and and build the transitions, or if I should extend all of these surfaces back and add um and add a transitional surface in the middle um and this is kind of one of the things that as you as you um the more you model the more you realize where you should and you shouldn't like extend um extend surfaces back if you've seen my other videos i'm a big um you know i always emphasize on you know trying to keep everything edge to edge and trimming it but um you also have to figure out what's the main surface and then what's a secondary surface and what's a transitional surface you know because to me these bezels are more uh secondary like uh surfaces because they're already round and and they're already like you know the main surface honestly to me would just be the spatula stick and the and the other side of it but um i mean the plane so so all these bezels and stuff it's easier for me or i could i i feel like it's easier to surface them push them back and surface them uh, remember in your square tool to use that collinear option um, to make sure that the degrees are 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 the same and um, and and you keep it as as simple as possible you know um, and and that's that's basically what's happening that that's basically all I do here you know before um, 
Yeah, this is like one of the easier parts of uh of um you know surfacing or modeling. You know, once you get the hard edge, and now you're just focusing on transitional surfaces. Um, but I will. We're, we're about to get. We're about to hit some. Once the main, the easy slabs are done, we're gonna hit some trickier sections. So um, I'll um for right now, I'll just I'll just let you guys watch um watch me work. And also, if you notice, there's gonna be a couple points where I. I extend shit back and I forget to delete history and it, it kind of like gives me a lot of see like right there it gives me a lot of extra work um there's some people that work with history always on but to me it causes me more problems than solutions so I always always delete the history like right now see I have that error right there that all happened because I extended it without deleting the the history and now I'm like doing all this like work to try to get the trimming back and now I can uh, add the that transitional surface, you know. So um, uh, remember, I mean, uh, you know, everyone has their own style. Me personally, I delete history all day, you know, the, the second I can. And um, and yeah, so so I'll just I'll just wait until the rest of the transitions happen. And once once we get to a trickier one, see right there, I forgot to delete the history again. Um, I'll start I'll, I'll start explaining what happens there. This is actually it's already getting a bit tricky, you know. Um, I, I definitely recommend that when you're doing tricky corners like that, just do surfacing squared up with the, with the curves yourself because um, freeform blends and um, I don't know other solutions, they're, they're a bit, they're a bit um, difficult, you know, and, um, and a lot of times you, you get the wrong solution. So I always go really slowly, add some blend curves and add, a, add a, make sure that they're curvature with themselves. And, and and usually that that's all you really need to do for simple things like this. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, once I finish this, I'll, I'll start talking when it gets a little more complex. So for these uh, types of transitions, I always tell people, you know, it's, it's very much like a, uh, the ballpoint corner video is try to keep all the degrees the same, um, make it uh, curvature and make it uh, collinear. And um, and that usually will get you in the right spot for these sorts of um, for these sorts of uh, surfacing places. But collinear isn't the answer for everything. There's gonna be a lot of places where it would never work, and and I'll talk about that when when we get there. Here's another spot where um, I was supposed to delete the history to make my life easier because I was about to do because I did a bunch of CV manipulations. But if you see those those really crazy movements, it's because it was still aligned. So you know my, the aligning tool is really like not helping me out here. And if I would have deleted the history from the beginning and done everything myself, I would have it would have been probably a lot easier. But since I kind of already messed up now at this point, I'm just uh I'm just uh using CV manipulation to to get it to get it in in place. But just just try to remember if there a lot of times if you move a CV and there's alignment. Uh, it might throw the whole surface out of whack. So once you start doing CV, CV manipulation, remember to uh, to hide or or um, um, delete the history that that's um, that before you start doing it. And also obviously save your file. So now I'm starting to trim uh, and and project uh, the different design elements that I have. And now this is basically uh, what I would call like a hard edge model. You know, I'm kind of like looking around, seeing what I have, and and knowing that my next, the next part is going to be the very complex like middle part. And I'm going to leave even my mistakes um, because you know it kind of shows how I came up with a solution. You know, and I'll just explain my process. So when I'm doing these sorts of um, sections, I always just try to focus on on one step at a time and not feel like too overwhelmed. So I just did the transitions or very long transition from one side to the other. And now I'm going to project a, a curve from one side to the other and, and trim it. And I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to fill in that hole. So for right now, I just add a, a quick curve right there and um, and make a surface, you know, and I, I've, I and I just this is when I remember that I never aligned it until this moment. So, um, uh, but then, you know, it was just a quick alignment. And I also forgot to align it on that side, well, at least to the edge. So, um, so once I made sure they were aligned, I could, I could make the square. As you can see here, I can't make the square because I keep messing up, uh, but I don't give up. And now I have a square there 
and it help and I'm checking the different curvatures that are already in there with using the square tool and um, I'm just seeing it as a way to sort of um, understand the relationship you know and and sort of try to work uh, work through this problem um, and as you can see here it's still you know it's a lot of like you know moving the model around like thinking okay how can I bend it where can I get the curvature how can I control this section is what's kind of like what I'm trying to solve in my head When I look back at my videos, it makes me laugh. Like, you know, those moments where I'm not doing anything but turning the model around, trying to figure out the, the next solution, you know? And um, and once I move this this surface back, it's sort of like everything sort of starts to click. And I realized that I could just kind of solve this with a very traditional, like, why fill it sort of surfacing solution. And once that really starts clicking, it, it becomes a lot easier for me to start figuring it out, you know. So I definitely know that I need a surface there. And I know that that surface is going to have to relate with those two other surfaces that are kind of like trying to meet up with it, you know. And I already know that there's going to be a lot of CV massaging. And once I start getting to that point and that like sort of solving this Y fillet, I'll slow down the, the video so we can kind of slowly go through it, you know. But right now, all I'm doing is seeing the the relationship between the 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 fillet on the or this sort of surface on the edge and where it gets in the middle. And now I'm gonna I'm gonna untrim those those outer surfaces, and I need to start figuring out a way to surface like this whole this like not gap but actually the full the full distance of the of that spacing, you know. All right, so now we are in this tricky ass section. This is gonna take a while, so everybody sit back. There's gonna be some errors. There's gonna be some exploring, uh, but right now I'm just gonna focus on trying to narrate my thought process behind what's going on right now. You know, um, I think I I already deleted the history with the with the CV manipulation. So now I'm just sort of moving those CVs to where I think they would want to be to make a, a smooth transition from from one corner to the next um, and I realize I don't need that bottom surface so I'm gonna I'll delete that bottom surface and then I'm gonna stretch this top surface to meet that middle surface just to see what the relationship is like so far you know um, you know it's, it's really important to remember to just take your time you know and just take it step by step and even if you don't know what you're doing, just kind of like, you know, um, that, that I mean, a lot of times I'm not really exactly sure, you know, so you, you, you actually see in, in a bunch of this how I'm going back and forth a lot, you know. Uh, so after I align that that um, the surface to this middle surface we're making, I realize that it's much too high up. I need to move all those all those CVs a, far, um, a lot further down. And um, and I still have that old curve. So I delete that curve. And now I'm just going to do a bunch of CV manipulation like we, we talked about before um, to get those CVs in order, you know. Moving these CVs changes the tangency and the curvature and how that surface is going to respond to it. And, um, and it's something that once you really start playing with these CVs a lot, you'll understand. It's pretty, it's pretty linear though, the, or very intuitive after a while. And, um, and basically, what I, this is what... Uh, what you would call CV massaging, you know, I'm just slowly pushing all of these CVs back, um, you know, trying to make everything relate and transition to itself a lot smoother. From these angles, it's kind of easy to see what happens. You know, basically, if you move the last CV, it changes the the sort of like the direction of that first row, and if you move the second CV out, it changes the curvature of of the sec of the second row and makes it um makes it a sort of like the opposite direction. You know, um, it's really it's really with practice it really becomes very second nature you know and as you can see here I'm even moving them down so that they can relate to each other in all of um, my modeling the one of the biggest rules is always you know um, 
as if the CV structure looks good, then then the rest will sort of will sort of follow. Obviously, right now this structure isn't looking that good. I'm in the process of massaging it and making all of those you know relate to each other and where it's going, you know. And um, and once you once you really start to hone in on that craft and you know focus on the CV massaging. It really gives you, to me, the full control of surfacing or modeling in general. You know, that's what that's sort of why high-end studios and automotive studios and Apple. That's why or Samsung. They they um a lot of people use, uh, all of them use nerve modeling. Period. Which you know, uh, most of the softwares can sort of give you this sort of workflow. But Alias is also extremely good, as you can see from here. Uh, in, in making these sorts of um, extremely high precision um, uh, transitions, you know, and it's something I actually enjoy a lot, even though it could seem tedious. And I'm sure looking at it, um, looking at me work might seem even more tedious, you know, but honestly, what I'm, I'm always just like kind of uh, enjoying the process, you know, of uh, or the challenge of making these curvature um, uh, surfaces. And if you see, like I went to check real quick, the reason why there's a surface break there is because it's a spatula and I haven't my tolerances are set a little higher for like cars um, but even if you like you know I did this quick surfacing here and then I make sure that uh, the square that with that the sides are curvature and um, even though my my surfaces aren't perfect I could kind of already see that I found the correct solution, you know. Um, and remember, you go down to your tolerances and you move uh, your tessellator to accurate, so you can see uh, a better reflection. And so here, here I can see that I definitely still have some tangency errors, but um, I could already see like the light at the end of the tunnel, you know. So it's uh, it's always very positive once you get here and you know, okay. My, maybe my CVs aren't in the perfect spot, but I, I'm pretty sure I found a, gr a good surfacing solution for this, and I just gotta keep massaging this to, to make it look uh, as, as good as I can. So after this, I'll just let you guys watch me uh, surface in silence while I you know do a bit of CV massaging, and um, and actually, this this is actually a little hidden, like wrong way. I didn't tell you guys, but I am. We're actually gonna rebuild this again in about three, four minutes. So, um, uh, but before that, I figured I figured might as well let you guys see my work process and um, you know just uh, give you guys a break from my voice.
So if you see here, um, I think this is really the part where it separates, um, I don't know, automotive, like professional modelers versus the typical modeler because uh, I think I think this would be sort of good enough for a lot of people in terms of a transition and uh, and all that to, to go to the next step. But I personally, I see a lot of errors um, in this transition. Um, I, I can see the highlight that it's turning a bit weird. And I definitely know that my CVs, as you can see here, aren't as perfect as they could be. So I'm going to actually go in there and start cleaning all of those CVs up, regardless of what happens afterwards. Because at this point, they're all very much in the same sort of area I want them. Um, but I know that if I make the CV structure cleaner, I can make my transitions cleaner and everything will, the highlights will be a lot more uh, nice and controlled. So that, that's what I'm doing here. I'm kind of like doing hyper modeling so that, um, so that everything looks really, really good. So here now we have a much better transition and if you think that that transition is good enough for me, uh, you're actually wrong because we ain't even close. <laughs> um, I actually, I feel like this is more my own um, OCD of making transitions perfect um, because I feel like that would have been good enough for almost anything, um, especially a spatula. Like I don't, I bet you if I would you know, whatever I do now versus what I just turned in, what I showed you right now, it wouldn't be that big of a difference from the final, you know, but, um, but that's kind of the level you're used to in the automotive world. You're just always hyper like modeling, you know? And what I did realize is that I didn't have enough CVs for this first, um, for this first surface, um, to control the, the transition as much as I wanted. So, Right now, I'm just sort of developing a curve network based off my previous surfaces I did um, to sort of help me get started, you know. But um, but obviously, all that work we just did for the past, um, I, I guess, like, you know, like 10, 15 minutes was completely pointless. And so right now, I mean, not pointless because it was part of the of how we found the, the solutions and where the surfaces need to be, you know. So um, uh, but now that we're at this point, I'm starting to redo all that just so that I can control the the I can control the transition even more. And right now, I just quickly inserted a curve on surface into the middle, and then I aligned that that um I aligned that curve onto that thing, you know, uh, onto that <clears throat> middle line. And then this was this will help me make a better transition, you know. I don't know if that line had to be aligned with the surface. Honestly, I could probably uh, curved it. Uh, closer like um, using a blend curve but um but it's fine I don't really uh, you know a lot of times uh, if you see a step I do and all of a sudden you're like why man why didn't he use this or why didn't he use that you know a lot of times I'm just so busy sort of thinking about the surfaces and the structures I'm not really I don't care too much about the tools I use you know so before I was using you know just straight up CV manipulation and now I'm using more of a curve network you know changing the boundary blends to help me like transition everything as much as possible. See, it's, it's all very like subtle um, CV massaging, you know, um, but but it's definitely it's definitely something that I don't think many people know about or actually haven't been exposed to. But it's it's something that I feel when you want to become a, a top level modeler and control your surfaces to the highest degree, you need to start understanding. All right, so I know what you're thinking again. You're saying, Ray, this is the second time we, build, we rebuild this transition. Doesn't it look good enough already? And the answer is, fuck no. Uh, <laughs> it looks terrible. Um, I, uh, 
I really, now that I look back, I'm like, man, I don't know. I don't know. It took me so many tries to get the solution in the end. But, um, uh, but you know, you got to remember that, that it always just takes a while to, to, to figure it out. So even though I'm doing all this work again and all these CV manipulations, I'm also going to tear it down in any second now and do it again. Um, and I think the, the thing about, um, the reasoning behind that is because I don't know, I'm, uh, that, that's kind of like what I'm used to, you know? And, um, and the second, I, I guess, I guess what I'm, the point I'm trying to make is you shouldn't fall in love with any solution, even if that solution took you fucking five hours to do or four hours to do, you know, because I see that happen a lot where, you know, and that happens to me a lot too, where I'm going down this long tunnel of like, you know, thinking I have a solution. And then once I get close to it, I realize, you know what, I fucked up. There was a better way to do it. I'm, oh, I'm definitely the type of person, obviously time constraints are something, you know, we, everyone needs to consider, but if there's time, I'm definitely, the, the, I always like just rebuild it. You know, if it's my own personal projects, I always rebuild it because then I can't stop thinking about, you know, oh, there's a better solution there, you know? So, um, just remember, don't, don't fall in love with any of your surfaces. And, um, and you know, if you find a better solution, aim to get that solution as opposed to just being lazy about it. Even though we are very, very close, um, something inside me is telling me that I have to, I just have to clean up this surface. You know, like you see how it has that sharp like turn and it's like, I can't, like that doesn't make sense, you know? So I get all those CDs out and I sort of isolate this surface and I just make sure it's as smooth as possible because like I said before, if my CDs are smooth, then everything else will sort of like fall in place, you know? So now that I, I isolated that surface and did a bunch of CV massaging to make it look really good, and, and, and still I'm, I'm changing those angles around so that all these, you know, um, all these uh, CVs are in line, uh, you know, it's really, this is where, where it's, I'm, I'm sort of honing in on the surfaces I need to create and I'm getting very close to it, you know? So, um, uh, it's really, I know, I know we rebuilt this a, a lot of times, but now that, that I'm getting close to my final result or the result I wanted for this, for, you know, this afternoon, um, I could, you know, it's, to me, it seems a lot cleaner than, than the rest of them, you know? And after, after this, um, you know, what I've been doing a lot is CV movement for relationships, right? Like I'm moving those CVs so that that transition goes uh, a, a little bit uh, higher up and it has a smoother transition, right? It's important to remember to step back and look at your surfaces from a higher perspective and not just what what is technical curvature because a lot of people, they'll have curvature in a certain, you know, in a certain uh, surface structure, but since the relationship between them isn't exactly honed in, it doesn't really matter, you know, like it's still, it's still not, it's still kind of wonky. Like, yeah, the zebra stripes are going to be relating to themselves, but I'm, I always, uh, you know, try to emphasize on, on making sure that the overall picture and the highlight control is, is correct 
as opposed to every edge having curvature. You know, I don't know if that makes sense. I think I guess what I'm saying is is you need to you need to look at it at a high perspective, not not at a not not don't close in on what is curvature in this little corner. If if we look at the big picture and we're not even in the right, you know, we don't really have a, a smooth like main transition, you know. And here, as you can see, I added some spans, and um, and and I just did that so that it makes it a little easier for me to find curvature amongst uh, in in this transition. Um, a lot of times, people try to do a little too much with one surface. And actually, as we keep going along this video, you'll see me use more more than you know uh, use more surfaces to help me out and uh, and give me more control, you know. But um, but now I feel like this is a, a nice good transition that I really I really enjoy and that will do it for the surface transition aspects of this um, video um, I hope you guys enjoyed it um, but there is a whole second part of this video which is going on right now it's where I start doing the fillets so um, I'm gonna slow it down a bit so I could explain some little tricky sections and and all that I think it's also worth uh, watching so you know uh, don't don't leave yet don't leave me or at least hit the like button or some shit, I don't know. Okay, so how I approach fillets is I always want to sort of do them section by section. So I in my settings, I put it to edge align. And especially in a project like the spatula, I just go section by section. And then I make sure that where they meet, um, they meet up... Um, in, in the same space, you know, so there's going to be a lot of filleting, erasing history and filleting and then um, projecting again. So here I'm just setting up the the fillet in this corner. And um, I was actually quite surprised that everything came out nice and uh, from the get go in terms of this fillet and when it hits the corner, you know, because a lot of times the, you might find some errors, but luckily that everything, everything came out good. Uh, but if you compare this fillet to the other fillet I did, um, um, especially when there's an angle like this, it, it changes a lot. So this is how I sort of fix these. Uh, there's a, there's multiple steps, but um, but it, it this sort of happens when you do it fillet by fillet. So so the first step is you have to align the fillet the the the, the transitional fillet onto the main fillet. So as you can see, the bottom fillet in this in this screen, like right now, I did it backwards. I shouldn't have done that. So I I I take that alignment out. And then I use the bottom fillet and I and I align it to the top because that's where it's the transitional the transitional surface. Then I I delete the the history, I untrim them, and then I use my project align based off uh, of well, right now it's based off view, but I should have done it based off normal, and um and then retrim it again. So that's that's how I I usually make these fillets and and then they connect to. To, um, uh, especially when they don't connect with each other, that's how I quickly sort of solve that problem. Just based on my surfacing, I know that that fillet in the corner, it might have some um, gapping issues and, I, and I'm checking that one side is curvature and that the other side, I'm checking if it's positional and it isn't. But if you see right there in max gap, it's uh its gap is 0 0.0019. So um that's a very extremely tiny gap, and it's usually that's really within the tolerances. So um uh it's definitely you can leave it there, but just because honestly it was because I knew I was recording this, I, I was like, alright, well I might as well just, you know, um all you have to really do is detach it. Um um detach the fillet and then and then connect them. What I try to do here real quick is actually project that fillet and then just cut it. But um, the tolerances weren't good enough. There's actually a l bunch of little mini errors that pop up just because I'm working at such a tiny scale, you know, like um, my settings are set up for a car, uh, a high end car, but it's still it's still not like spatula mini mini, you know, fillet settings. But um, but it's still, there's still very easy ways to sort of solve those issues if you wanted to solve those issues, right? Like uh, just uh, cut the, detach the surface and then you align it with a positional. Most of the time that would give you curvature anyways, but at this time it didn't. So I'm just gonna do some very quick um, CV alignment and, um, and you know, using my, my transform CV and, and get curvature all around.
So right now I like what I'm seeing. Um, everything is nice and smooth and I know that I'm gonna try to run this fillet all the way around just to see what happens and most likely it's gonna fail and um, and there's also a high probability that it's gonna freeze so remember to save your work before you do any crazy filleting right so I filleted it and now I'm selecting the plane and then that transition and I'm gonna select all the surface to the side and I'm not too worried about you know this happening because I already know that this is a pretty tricky section for alias to figure out so there's no um, you know most likely it's not gonna happen and it doesn't happen or I mean it does but it, it has a bunch of errors you know especially in the in the corner in the corner of the of the form so it's like okay that didn't work um, so so I kind of do the same thing I was doing oh and look the reason why it happened like this little alignment issue was because I forgot to um, I forgot to freeze the history and I'm just, like I remember I was so mad at myself right there because I'm like oh like why did you know adding a fillet why would have adding a fillet change the alignment of those two surfaces it's really it was so um i was mad about that so actually i think i even reopen it so yeah let me <laughs> i uh, open the file again and i'm just like i'm so pissed that i forgot to i think i even forget to do it again too let's see yeah there you go i delete the i delete the history there's other there's other areas too so since that fillet didn't work and um and it fucked up my alignment everywhere else like i fixed that with the hiding of the of the I mean deleting of the curvature and now I'm projecting that corner and I'm cutting it so that I could do it one one uh, um, aspect at a time see so now I'm adding a fillet here you know and actually that that one got really close to to that edge and and the fillet worked you know so I'm like okay now I got I got a fairly you know I'm, I'm, I'm getting closer to to what I need to do you know um, and then I, I, I see the same thing happen again with the alignment tool because I forgot to I forgot to clear the history. It had some weird issues there, but now I'm deleting history everywhere, making sure that, that it's gone. Um, I know there's a, there, there's some guys that work with history all day, and I was just like, I wish I knew like the 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 steps to it, you know. And then I realized that if you see there in the middle. I could use a interior edge align right now, like so I'm doing that, and those interior lines right there, where I'm zooming into, will straighten out. See, so it, it really depends on the surface structure. But since everything is very structured, uh, you know, because that's how I, I sort of model, I can use that. You know, so now it gives me a really nice clean um, fillet that even matches up with the previous one um, without having to do that alignment thing I did again. You know, and now I want to do that bottom lip. So um, I'm gonna select the. I'm gonna activate my my. Um, first, I select all of them and delete the history, and then I'm gonna activate my fillet tool again and select those those uh, outer surfaces, and and then I'm gonna add a fillet. So see, uh, before I didn't. I tried to have a fillet run through all of that, and it just didn't work out. And on this side, that that uh that fillet was not aligned. But that's a like as you saw how I solved it the other time. I could just quickly solve it again, you know. Um, make sure that you align the fillet that is in the transitional surface side. I know I'm repeating myself, and I know I have repeating myself multiple times in this um, uh, in all of in all of my videos. Honestly, it's like just remember I'm doing it because I know a lot of you are just learning a bunch of these lessons. So and repetition never hurts. And I did a project align to uh, to align that, and I actually only aim for tangency because. Um, I already know what we're, you know, I'm fairly close to curvature anyways, you know, um, and there I, I have, uh, I have this, uh, this, these fillets all the way around. And also everybody remember, um, like what I, what I talked about in the sense of looking for curvature in these little tiny ass fillets. These are 0.5 millimeter fillets. They're tiny. Nobody's going to know if it's uh, truly curvature or mathematically curvature in a million spots or curvature in most of it except one little 0.1 millimeter corner you know um, so especially with the grains and all that you know um, I try to keep everything very 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 simple but if you are looking for curvature you know it's always good to add a little more spans uh, just to get that curvature uh, with spans a lot of times I've said it in my videos where I'm like trying to like use the least amount of spans possible 
but um honestly it doesn't it's not that important like in terms of uh there's a lot of people that model with a shit ton of spans and to me i don't care about your spans i just care about your highlight control and your volume control if that shit is good then the rest sort of just falls in place you know um uh if the main structure is fine then everything else is is fine you know so now we're getting to some real tricky sections okay so the first thing i do is i insert a curve on surface that is lined up with that fillet and then i just press enter because i know a curve on surface is gonna give me a, a good starting point to um to to develop a curve you know so i i make sure that it's aligned to that fillet and then I, I press, uh, oh, right there, I press detach and accident. So I undo that, and then I press my insert hotkey, and I insert it into, into that, into that uh, surface. And then I duplicate that uh, curve, and now I'm going to align that curve, delete the curve on surface I did before, and I'm going to align it to the fillet, and I'm going to align it to the other fillet. The reason why I did all of this back and forth is because it gave me a good starting point for this curve. That curve is uh, is very close to that surface. I only have to do a little bit of manipulation to make sure that it is almost right on top of that surface, you know? And then from there, I'm gonna do the, the blend curve on the other side of this surface, you know? So I isolate the fillets that I'm gonna, the, the, the fillet that I'm doing the blend point in, and then I just put a blend curve between them, and then I align them to its edges. And now when I unhide everything, I can see that that's, that's not really, um, it needs to relate more with the other surface, the other curve. So I push, I push those boxes out more, and it, that pushes the tangency and the curvature closer to the other surface, you know? So this is a quick way for me to make the cleanest possible like surfacing solution for for this fillet um, that I have to custom make. Now I'm deleting the history and I'm gonna isolate uh, the 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 curves and the surfaces and then I'm just gonna do a simple square. So remember to do curvature and make sure that your collinear option is is set too that usually fixes any curvature issues especially for these sorts of uh, conditions um the other thing i'm going to do too is uh i'm going to actually add more spans on this surface later and that and that because i know that i'm asking i would be asking too much from uh from one surface to do all that you know so um one of the places where i could detach it is actually where where that other where, where this surface um, breaks. So if you see in that corner right there, I could just detach it there. And that gives me a good spot to, to sort of, you know, cut the fillet so I could align it, you know. Now I use the uh, project align and I add a little more spans. And that, that um, like, oh, actually, yeah, I think with the, let me see. I think I add a little more spans. Remember, sometimes it just needs a little more help to um, the little more spans to get the curvature. But honestly, it's such a tiny part. I don't know if I care about uh, losing curvature in that little itty bitty corner, you know. Um, so there, now I trim that, and then I isolate the next section and uh, project a line, and and trim that trim that too. And there, I basically made a nice a nice. Uh, uh, oh, I still need to align it to the other side. Uh, but that that one should be even easier so i just uh, select it uh, project a line curvature and uh, project a line cur uh, curvature and uh and then there you go i just did this nice little fillets without without having the automatic fillet tool work so um uh you know this is a very important aspect of your of any design um or any like high-end modeler like um a workflow you need to know how to make your own custom fillets and you also need to know to that you need to look at the watch and see is it worth it for me to do max curvature like let's remember that this is uh, I'm only doing one day of work here you know um, if I wanted to I could definitely make everything perfect and um, and honestly I, I really I want to emphasize the fact that I've been doing this for eight years I know I, I say that all the time in fucking videos I know you're probably tired of hearing it but I um uh, I would never expect a student I'm um, showing or someone I'm training I would never ever ever expect them to do this 
what I did and with my speed and with my understanding, you know, because a lot of the things I'm doing and, and how quickly I come up with these structures is just based on the fact that I've been doing this for a very, 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 very long time. And I've come up, I've come across these sorts of problems plenty of times uh, with everything, you know, like this is a spatula, but this could easily be, I don't know, um, uh, uh, a, a control stick or like you know um, a, a paddle shifter it could be a pen you know like this surface structure it's really you know it's uh you, you can use it for a lot of things you know and these problems are always going to come up uh, millions of times in your in your career you know so just remember uh i'm very used to this and that's why that's why everything is coming out so clean with me you know and now i'm actually just selecting all of them and i'm mirroring the other side and I'm and I'm almost done with the with the well except for the separations, um, uh, but now I have to add these little itty bitty um, itty bitty uh, uh, fillets where, which are going to be tiny fillets, uh, but there's actually also little lessons to learn there. So uh, please stick around. Okay, so the first thing I'm doing just to take a break from filleting is extending that surface and then projecting it because I don't think I need um, I just having one plane would be easier for me uh, in the in long term and I'm also I'm sort of avoiding the <laughs> the next step because I know it's gonna be a bit a bit tedious and um, and not as fun as a uh, as the rest of the project because honestly the fun part of the project is like the before stuff you're looking at you know this at this point is extremely technical. I could give this to anybody and be like, hey, do some fillets here and, you know, and double check their transitions. But, you know, it's not really, this is more of a technical art, you know, as opposed to a creative sculpting. Um, but there is definitely a lot of technical lessons to learn, especially when we get to these corner fillets. Uh, one of the main things you should know is even though these are extremely tiny fillets, a lot of people will go, oh, yeah, just do tangency because they're tiny. And um, basically, my thought on that is one is unless they tell me I have to do tangency for some weird reason, um, I do it. But I always aim for curvature. And but what I'm saying is that doesn't mean that I take all the time in the world to get curvature. It just means that since if they if it's such a tiny fillet, they probably only need tangency. But I'm still going to aim for curvature. And even if I don't get curvature, I'll get a cool little result. You know, so. Um, um, I'm not saying you need to find curvature in every section. I'm saying aim for curvature, especially with these little ones. And um, and if you don't get it, don't worry about it. They're fucking 0.25, uh, you know, um, they're, they're tiny. Um, so anyways, here I, do, I did a little bit of a mistake because what I do is I insert a curve on surface to this bigger surface thinking that it was going to... I don't know, be a, a consistent fillet and, and it isn't. It, it goes way higher and um, and so it doesn't really, it doesn't make sense to do that workflow. So I untrim them again and then instead of uh, inserting a curve on surface, I add a fillet like I was doing with the rest of them. So now I'm going to do the same thing I did with the other one. I'm going to duplicate that edge and use that as a starting point. And remember the reason why when I duplicate this edge and a nice little five degree curve pops out is because when I cut that, I cut it using the insert tool with a, with a curve on surface. So that's, that's why it's so nice and clean. If you re, um, if you try to du duplicate an edge and then you see a million spans on that curve, it usually means because it was a, a, a projection or something else, you know. But in my case, I, I do it very structured so that it is based off the surface and it makes my life a lot easier. And so basically all I did is I duplicated those edges again and I aligned it to the other one. And now I'm going to delete the, the curve on surfaces and I could use these I could use these curves as a way to start my fillet again for for this corner. Now this corner is even more exaggerated and um, and I already know that that um, that I, there, there's no way I'm gonna be able to get these surfaces to behave how I want with just one one span one 
one surface all over all the way around i'm definitely going to need more information and this i just know through intuition so uh because i've done it so many times so uh i i changed the spans to three spans because i feel like that would be enough to 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 give me the the the, the result i want and now I'm just gonna I'm gonna project a line a tangency onto onto them. Now this is definitely one of the other places where I don't aim that much for curvature at all because it's like it's like I don't really I don't think I need I need to be spending that much time, um, you know, for this corner. But as you can see here, it's still a little too flat for me. You know, it's only like that's kind of like what you get with a, if you only aim for tangency. But that doesn't mean that, that that we can't come in there and you know um, try try to make some better things. So I delete, I, I untrim it again, and now I'm gonna aim for curvature and see and see what type of result I get. Now you see, um, that's not exactly what I was sort of like thinking on my head. You see how it sort of like bends up like that, and so I'm like, oh, that's kind of weird, and um, and it just it's just not really, it's not something that that. I, I think looks good, you know, so I know that, okay, this looks kind of weird, but I'm gonna just do custom CV massaging to make that work for me, you know, so, so after I get a, an area where I'm, I think I'm, I'm good with it, with in terms of the spans and all that, I, um, I reproject it on the other side, and, and once I start the manual manipulation, the first thing I'll do is delete the history. Now I want you guys to pay attention to the result that um, that alias gave me versus what I'm gonna do now with my CV manipulation. You know because uh, I know that even like you know this sort of weird inverted um, solution that, that I'm selecting right now. Uh, I know that I can manipulate that to to be different. You know so first I slide it out and then I slide it forward. And then I, I slowly make sure that I get curvature again. See, so now it has it has a little more roundness to it. And even though, see, this this kind of goes to show that there's plenty of ways to sort of get curvature. So don't think that just because the curvature line tool did this or that 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 um it's not it's that is the the only the only way to get that. And something is wrong, you know. A lot of times, just doing some custom manipulation works all the time and honestly now looking back i could definitely have made that even smoother but um again it's a 0.25 fillet and uh, at this point I'm, I'm just getting kind of bored of it and i'm pretty sure you guys are probably really bored of it too um this has been an hour and a half that's a really long class um to all of those that stuck around uh thank you I hope you learned a lot. Uh, I will be releasing the a, a quick, a shorter video on how I did those other ball corners, but I think for for right now, I'll I'll just uh, let the video end here and let you guys sort of process what you've learned. Um, remember, we went through a lot of of different um, concepts and different exercises. Um, don't worry if you didn't really understand all of it. You know, I I always try to make my videos. Um, so that they help out a big like set of skill sets, you know, people from beginners to late people who are already maybe working professionals and are just kind of like, um, you know, seeing how I approach these sort of problems. So, um, so just, uh, uh, I hope, I hope you guys enjoyed it and, um, I'll see, I'll see what type of response we get from this. I might do some more of these. Um, I'm not so sure. Um, but yeah, I, I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you guys have a nice day. Uh, and a nice week and good luck on your 3D modeling journey.